Now to the phenom known as 54. Studio 54, that is. Tonight, a documentary about the famous 70s nightclub will air on A&E, and it promises the real story behind the hedonistic hotspot. In this Daily Mail TV exclusive, meet three friends who were at the epicenter at the height of one of the hottest New York club scenes ever. They were creating a universe that wowed people, that wowed the people that everybody was wowed by. They are, of course, Ian Schrager and the late Steve Rubell, founders of Studio 54, which opened on April 26, 1977, and closed in early 1980. Though the original incarnation of the club only lasted about three years, it had a lasting impact on pop culture. Myra Shear, Mark Beneke and Chuck Gerlich are insiders who saw it all, and there was a lot to see. Drugs, rock and roll, you know, sex. You could walk through the door and you loved everybody, everybody loved you, and you were there to dance and have a good time. Well, you couldn't just walk through the door. Studio 54 helped usher in the age of the velvet rope, and you had to be one of the chosen. Mark Beneke got to do the choosing. You really wanted as much of a mix as possible. I mean, that was part of the beauty of it. It was pretty obvious that, that if you're a celebrity model or if you had a great energy, that was another thing that really, really helped you get inside. Though celebrities were usually secreted in through the back door, Studio 54 leveled the playing field between stars and everyday people, something you don't often see today. People are spellbound now when, they, when you show them a picture of like Michael Jackson, dancing with non-famous people without any bouncers around. Studio 54 had an almost anything goes attitude. As far as sex, that just went on all over the place, so. <laughs> While the famous shot of Bianca Jagger crossing the dance floor on the white horse was real, the rumor that 54's bad boy owners hid hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash in the basement ceiling wasn't. So it wasn't hundreds of thousand dollars, it was what was needed for the night, so he didn't have to open the damn safe every time. In the Studio 54 documentary, Ian Schrager, who's usually hesitant to talk about his historic nightclub, breaks his silence on 54's legacy. Now at a point in my life uh, that uh, doesn't sting as much after all this time the way it, it, it used to sting. Myra, Mark, and Chuck are also part of the film and are big fans of both Ian and Steve. Steve died of complications from AIDS in 1989. They were great guys. I mean, it was like being around family. So what was their reaction when Ian and Steve were convicted of tax evasion in 1980 to the tune of $2.5 million in unreported income? We were stunned. Both Ian and Steve were sentenced to three and a half years on the charges. February 4th, 1980 marked the end of an era. Studio 54 closed and Ian and Steve went to prison, but not before throwing one last bash at the infamous night spot. And they played the Frank Sinatra song, I did it my way. The line that really got me in the documentary when Ian said we rose together and we fell together. Studio 54, the documentary, airs tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern on A&E.